So in this video, I just want to make one more uh, tutorial, and that is for just basically setting up your own index.html um, local dev environment. You may hear this term thrown out a lot, uh, especially when you start working in front end. A lot of people will say, hey, set up your own local development environment. And you may be wondering what they are talking about. Well, essentially, that just basically means like you're going to be working um, on your computer locally and uh, you know most often you're going to be creating your own files and folders so because this is so common of an exercise I'm going to show you how to do that with um, the terminal since we've been learning terminal all along so um, again this will also be some chances to review some of the things we learned from the other videos but um, I hope you like it and uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and close out of this terminal that I've got here and uh, as you can see here are some of the files and folders I made from last time I'm just going to go back over to terminal here on my dock click it and it'll show me that I'm working in my current directory of squiggly lion remember that's your user's name folder um, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, click over to I'm going to cd over to desktop actually and in the last video, we made a command called make web, which was allowed me to make this website here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and remove this for now. I'm going to say rm-r website. That'll get rid of that. We'll also rm sample website and I need the dash r, of course. Otherwise, it won't work. And I'll just show you what happens if you do rm. It'll say it is a directory. So, of course, if you have a directory, you have to have the dash r. I'll also go ahead and do rm-sample website 2 that way I have a clean desktop um, so uh, next thing what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create my folders and files so I'm gonna go ahead and do this a little manually because I want you to just see what I'm doing and then maybe if you want to think about it afterwards you could think about how to write your own alias using the commands that I wrote here and uh, you can probably eliminate a lot of this manual tedious work uh, that's up to you though. Um, so again, I'm going to clear my screen so I don't have any junk up here. And I'm going to go ahead and make a directory first. I'm going to go ahead and say that it's my sample project. Okay. All right. So next, I want to uh, go inside of my sample project folder. So I'm going to CD tab for sample project. And then I'm going to go ahead and touch index.html but this time I'm going to space stuff out as opposed to writing touch a bunch of times I'm going to say space style.css space script.js then I'm going to go ahead and say open because this is a shortcut I made earlier and that'll open this sample project and I can see I have my index.html my script and my style of course they're all blank I'm going to teach you a new command here it's called cat and basically how it works is, actually I'm going to teach you two of them. I'm going to go ahead and teach you cat first. Cat basically shows me what the contents of my file are, or any file I choose. So I'm going to say index.html, and you can see nothing returns back. I'm going to teach you one more command here called echo. Echo allows me to print stuff inside of a file without actually having to use nano, the text editor. This is a faster way of writing file stuff into files as opposed to using the nano editor. Um, you can still use nano if you prefer. But I'm just going to have to start with a quote. You always have to have a quote when you use the echo command. And I'm just going to say angular bracket HTML, then angular bracket head, and just basically the same way I'd always type like my HTML, but I'm going to type it out in one line. And I'm going to use double quotes here because if you use a single quote, you'll end the script. So I want to use this double quote to keep the distinction between the two files. And let's go ahead and just keep going with this. So I'm going to close out my head tag. And then I'm going to create a body tag. I'm going to create a p tag. Hello world. And you'll notice that this terminal keeps me going to the next line. And you can keep typing as you like. And I'm going to close out my body tag. And I'm going to close out my HTML tag. And I'm going to close out my single quote. So this matches up with that. Oops. 
So you'll notice I pressed up on my keyboard and that changed my command back to cat. But the thing about bash that's really cool is if you press down on your key, it remembers what you were trying to type before. So you can press up and down, and those will give you all the commands that you did in the past plus the future. So I'm going to press enter now. Actually, before I press enter, I'm going to use something called the write command. And that's basically this uh, greater than operator, greater than sign actually. And I'm just going to add the file's name here, index.html. So this seems confusing. All I'm doing here is I'm saying echo, and I want to print all of this stuff, and I want to paste it into my index.html. So I'm going to hit enter. Nothing comes back, but go ahead and open. And this time, let's go ahead and open this page. And if I open this page, here's my hello world. And now if I also view page source, here's all the stuff that I wrote. Now, it's not pretty formatted like when you usually write your HTML, and I don't recommend you write all of your HTML like this. This would be really difficult and tedious. However, for getting started, it's great to have you know all of this stuff just kind of written out so that if, for whatever reason, you wanted to come over to Sublime, you can go over to Sample Project, drag it to your Sublime app, and then, of course, you have this index.html all pre-formatted, and you can go ahead and like continue to format it a little bit more if you like. Um, there are also commands that you can use to make all this pre-formatted. But um, for our example today, we're just doing some uh, index.html creation with this um, with the command line. So I'm just formatting it here a little bit. So now this is what our page looks like. And also, if you want, you can take this index.html and the next time you can do, um, let's go ahead and I'm going to just rm index.html. So now I'm going to touch index.html and I'm going to use the cat command. Actually, I'm sorry, the echo command. And I'm going to go ahead and paste all this stuff here and press enter after I, of course, append to the index.html. And of course, now if I use the cat command, that shows me I've got all this stuff here formatted nicely in this file. And if I go over to this page, here's my index.html with that formatting. Okay, so maybe a little bit of the formatting's off, but it's okay. You know, this is good enough to start with for now. So that's a quick way of how you can format this, you know, like anytime you like. Uh, next thing I want to do is I want to jump into like how to use um, Sublime itself. Um, Sublime text is really cool in that you know it allows you to create web pages very fast. Um, one thing that I like about Sublime is that I could just type the word HTML as long as I'm in an index.html file and then hit tab and then it'll complete all this stuff for me. I don't have to actually write it out. So I can name my um, website hello world and of course, you know, I can go in here and I can say hello world. And of course, um, if I type link and hit tab, it'll complete the link for me. Um, the lim link, you know, uh, attribute in HTML. And of course, I can type script and that'll complete script for me. And I can go ahead and put script.js. And then basically, like, this project is ready to go, like we saw from creating Bash. So, you know, Bash allows me to create these files fast. Um, I'm just, for now, just going to style some stuff. So I'm just going to say P should be colored, and I'll just make it purple for now. And then, of course, script will always do alert, hello world. Okay, so now I go over, over here, and then I right-click, and I say open in browser. And that opens this page in a browser with the hello world. And let's see here. This hello world kind of looks like it's still black. So let's see what's going on here. If I right click and I inspect, and you may want to remember this, this is going to be like something that 
should remember from now on. I'll do that one more time. If I right click anywhere on my page while I'm in the Chrome browser, this is key, I'm using Chrome. If I right click and I hit inspect, this will show me something called developer tools. And the developer tools will basically show me all of my HTML and body and all of my head stuff uh, pre-formatted as if I had written the code itself. So I'm going to go over to that hello world here and I can inspect and I can see yes the uh, purple style is missing from my HTML. So I'm going to go over back to here and I'm going to see why didn't that get saved. Oh, if you notice here I've got a little circle here. So I'm going to just, before I jump the gun, I'm going to open this link in a new tab and you'll notice I have no styling here. And the circle basically means I didn't save the file. So I'm going to hit Control S on my keyboard to save the file. Then I'll refresh this page and then you can see I have that color purple. And I'll also refresh this page and I'm hitting Command R to refresh and now you can see I have this nice little purple here. If that's a little hard to see, I'll zoom in. So um, finally, I want to end up with just like using this developer tools a little bit more. And so the developer tools is basically how, you know, most of us web developers like manipulate our web pages. And also we do like basic styling and development. Um, you know, you come here first, so I'm going to refresh. And again, we get that little alert. And then of course, if I go over to body and I click on the P tag, you can see it's now purple. But let's say I wanted to make this some other color. Let's just right click on here and I'm going to make this like maroon or red or pink. Do you see how I'm dragging around here? This developer tool is really cool because it allows you to kind of change the page and you know change it to your liking and then once you find a color you like, or a style you like, or a font, let's go ahead and change the font too. I'll go ahead and write some CSS properties in here. And I'll just say that the font should be Arial. So now the font is Arial. And let's bump up the font size to 32 pixels. Okay, so this developer tools allows me to just basically like write CSS, test it out, and then when I like it, I can finally save it to my actual work. You'll notice that like if um, I'll just go ahead and comment this out here. And if I just put <clears throat> color red like this, all my changes are gone, right? The Anytime I save in here, like it doesn't actually save here. Actually, you can't save anything in the developer tools. You can only just copy and paste. So that's what I did beforehand. I copied and pasted those formats into my style.css, and then of course I save, and then the next time around, those things are there. So developer tools gives you a chance to kind of preview and if you don't like the changes, you can just refresh the pages and all the stuff will go away. However, if you like it, remember to save it back in your actual file so that next time it's there. So one more thing, um, you can also write JavaScript in the console here. And this is really useful for doing basic JavaScript debugging. Um, if you refresh this page, you'll notice I have an alert. Um, from here, I can continue writing more JavaScript. I can say other things like Coca-Cola or something, I don't know. Uh, and there we go, there's an alert. And of course, I can say console.log. This is a very famous one. You're going to get used to this if you do a lot of web development. You can say, um, let's do some basic math here. Console log 2 plus 2. And that's inside of this parentheses. Remember, parentheses is for a function. And of course, that gives me 4. So, you know, uh, console log plus alert plus all of these other commands that I can write inside here. Well, this console allows me to do a whole bunch of JavaScript in here. I can do basic math. I can say 2 plus 2 is 4. I can say 10 times 123. That would be 12,340. So, you know, like 0 divided by 0. That's not a number. So use this. The console and the developer tools are your friend, and they make web development a lot easier than trying to do this all from hand. Um, especially like, you know, trying to figure out the colors and the, the font size stuff. 
Um, I use the developer tools a lot to like sort of edit and clean up my pages, especially if my pages don't max, uh, match like a given Photoshop file from a designer. The developer tools help me get it a lot closer to like what it's supposed to actually look like in the design. So I highly recommend you guys use this. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you liked it and uh, I'll see you in the next one.